uh, what we need to do for the uh, for the uh, uh, to to kind of stress out our traffic management system a little bit more. Um, we're gonna try to create a um, a swap positional swap, right? Which means that we're gonna take uh, robot two and we're gonna command it to go to the same position as robot one. And at the same time, uh, we're going to take robot one and get it to go to the same location as AMR2 right now, where it's where AMR2 is right now. Um, so this will create um, a condition we call a swap condition within our traffic management system. And so what we expect to happen is that um, either AMR1 or AMR2 uh, will get routed to an intermediate parking point first, right? And that will free up either of these two locations, such that the other AMR can then move to its final uh, goal. So once the AMR gets there, um, the AMR that was at the intermediate parking point is gonna be moved up and into its final goal as well. Uh, and thus we provide a, um, a swap functionality uh, by using an intermediate parking location. Right, so to make things a bit more interesting, um, we're gonna at the same time uh, incorporate um, another AMR which is uh, AMR3, right? Uh, and AMR3 is gonna be commanded to go from where it is right now um, to the staging location over here. Uh, so to do that, um, the, uh, the fleet manager is gonna create a path that looks something like this. Okay. Uh, and as we can see here, um, there are three AMRs which are sharing effectively the same corridor. Uh, and uh, what's gonna happen is uh, our fleet management system is gonna try to uh, reconcile this and try to sequence the robots in such a way that um, each robot has uh, enough time to wait and pause while the other robot goes through. Um, and uh, they, they don't, they're don't not going to interfere and obstruct each other. Um, so what, what we have in the background um, uh, running in this is something we call a time window. Uh, so the time window basically allows um, the fleet manager to tell the robot where to wait and when to wait. Um, so it basically deconflicts these robots, not just in um, in space, not just in our XY plane, but also in a, in a time uh, window, in a time uh, dimension as well. So in this case, um, as AMR3 is commanded to move, um, we will see the, the, the fleet management system get AMR3 to stop uh, at this waypoint over here, okay, uh, and wait while AMR1 and 2 try to uh, swap their locations. Okay, uh, and uh, after AMR three, uh, after AMR one and two have finished swapping the locations, um, the uh, time window will be then free for uh, AMR one to uh, to try and move out of the uh, uh, of the way and finally get it to its uh, final location at staging. Okay, uh, so with that scene set up. Uh, what we're going to try and do is that we're going to try to create um, these three goals in quick succession, uh, and we're going to uh, see what happens in the actual uh, camera. Okay, so I'm going to stop screen sharing now. Okay, uh, and we will then start to uh, uh, issue the goals to all the various AMRs. Okay. All right. So. Uh, um, my team's just kind of sequencing up the demo right now, the demo sequences right now. Uh, and we're going to issue the uh, goals to AMR1 first, followed by AMR2 and followed by AMR3. Uh, and we're going to do this in very quick succession um, to kind of force this uh, conflict to happen um, within this uh, small space. So you can see AMR1 has got a goal um, for it to go. Uh, AMR2 also has a goal for it to move as well. Uh, and in this case, what we should see is uh, AMR1 uh, going to the intermediate parking point uh, and giving way to AMR2 for it to go to the VMOCRI station. Uh, AMR3 in this juncture also has received uh, its navigation goal to come to the staging area down here. Um, and right now it's waiting for AMR1 and 2 to finish the uh, swap maneuver first. So AMR2 is kind of uh, waiting, waiting for, the, for the path to be marked as clear. Um, so we do give some allowance about 15, 10 to 15 seconds, uh, which is configurable depending on how dense an area we have. Um, so if, uh, if it's a very uh, highly dynamic area where the AMR is going to be stopped a lot um, and it's going to be interrupted a lot during its motion, uh, we'll typically give uh, a much larger buffer time so that 
the uh, AMR has more time to be interrupted as it moves um, towards its next uh, goal. Um, and if it does get interrupted along the way and uh, it knows that it cannot achieve a certain waypoint at a certain time, it will flag this situation up to the server um, and the server will then take action accordingly. Or maybe it might, it might pause uh, some of the other robots. Uh, it might ask this robot to uh, slow down. It might ask this robot to find a, a, give an alternative path for this robot uh, because of its current situation on the ground. So uh, all this happens um, during our uh, traffic management and traffic planning phase uh, within the server. So there's no need for the user to set up any additional uh, traffic light systems, uh, junction waypoints, or, or any other uh, configurable item. Um, all that is taken care of in the in the in the background, uh, and our server will decide uh, where is the best place for these AMRs to be deconflicted and to wait. So now we can finally see that um, AMR1 has got its final goal free. Uh, and what's going to happen is that it's going to get routed from the parking point uh, into its final destination. Uh, and we have, what we can see right now is all the AMRs have reached their goals. Um, they basically swapped AMR1 into its location. And at the same time, AMR3 has reached its final destination uh, while sharing the same corridor space as AMR1 and 2. OK. 